Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create pixel art using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.10 which at the time of this recording is the latest version of GIMP. But of course, before I get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing, which is a bestseller on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So specifically for this tutorial today, I'll be showing you how to convert a sketch drawing as you see here. This is one that I created in GIMP using a Wacom tablet. And for those of you who have tablets but don't have them set up yet, I do have a tutorial on how to do that. So I'll link that to this video. But I sketched this using the Wacom tablet here. And I did have some basic dynamics on here, so I didn't do anything too crazy, just a really quick sketch here. And then I colored this in using the bucket fill tool with the fill by line art selection option checked. And if I come over here to the bucket fill tool, you can see that right here. And I did go over that briefly in my what's new in GIMP 2.10.10 tutorial. So I took this drawing over here, this sketch on the left, and I converted it over here on the right to a pixel drawing. If I hit control shift T, that's going to show my guides that I created here. And if I go to view, show grid you guys can also see the pixel grid that i referenced while drawing this and a few other details you'll notice that we'll get into with this tutorial is that i created a little bit of shading at the bottom of some of these objects here just to give this a little bit more dimension and i also added just a little bit of detail like these white dots going on here and the white dots in the eyes so some basic takeaways of pixel art number one this is going to be an 8-bit drawing so everything is going to be based on single pixels and it's all usually going to be multiples of eight meaning that when you create your new document it's going to be 8 by 8 16 by 16 32 by 32 64 by 64 and so on additionally you're going to have limited color so you want to really make your colors go as far as possible in terms of what they're communicating with the characters that you're drawing so in this case i only had a color palette of probably four or five colors here and i tried to make the most of those colors Something else is that you want to avoid something called jaggy, so you want the lines you create to look like nice, straight, even lines. You don't want them being all over the place in terms of number of pixels you're drawing. And finally, you want everything to be basically symmetrical. So if you look at my drawing, there are a couple of items that are off-center, but for the most part, this is a fully symmetrical drawing, and that's just going to help make the drawing look a little bit better overall. So let's dive into this tutorial here. I'm not going to do the drawing again from scratch. I created a new document for that so I went to file new and I just chose 500 by 500 the advanced options don't matter too much but I did have it set to 300 by 300 for the drawing and then for precision you can really set this to whatever I had this set to 32 bit floating point at the time I did the drawing so after you do the drawing, you're going to want to create your document for the pixel art. This is going to have different settings, and these settings do matter. So I'm going to, for my drawing, create a 64 by 64 document. And this is in pixels, by the way. So make sure you do have that unit set to pixels. And then for resolution, I went with 72. And I did go with pixels per inch for that. And the precision here is going to be 8-bit integer, and the gamma is going to be perceptual gamma. And I'll click OK. So here's our document and it's going to start off really small and actually if I come back here to my original drawing you can see this is actually zoomed in to 800% so this is eight times the original size. So if I hold control and use my mouse wheel to zoom out I can zoom all the way out until this is at 100% of the zoom and I'll hit control shift T. So this is the actual size of my little pixel art drawing here. So it's actually really small here, but when we hold control and zoom in, we could see the full extent or the full details of our pixel art. So I'm gonna come back over here to my empty document here, and I'm going to just click and drag this. And by the way, I have multi-window mode enacted here, and you guys are probably used to working in single window mode. I think it's more effective when you're doing pixel art to break things up into multi-window mode. So to do that, just come over here to Windows, and click on single window mode. So make sure that's unchecked and that's going to separate all of your windows into separate windows and that's just going to make it easier to reference your sketch drawing as you're working on your pixel art. So now I'm gonna hold control and zoom in. So now we're all the way up to 800%. So this is eight times the original size. I don't want the background color here being black. So if I hit shift B, that's gonna pull up my bucket fill tool here and I'm gonna switch the foreground color to white. 
and I'll just fill that in. So the next thing I want to do is create a new layer and I'm going to name this bunny because that's going to be where we're drawing the bunny elements here. And I'm going to make sure the fill width is set to transparency and make sure everything else is just set up to the default and I'll click OK. So this is going to be the layer where we draw our bunny character. Next, I want to draw some guides here just so we can reference that as we're drawing our symmetrical parts of our character. So I'll go over here to Image, Guides, and then select New Guide by Percent. And I'm gonna go with Vertical first, and I'm gonna make sure this is set to 50% and click OK. That'll give us a middle guide here, and I'm gonna do that again for the horizontal guide. So I'll go to Image, Guides, New guide by percent and change this to horizontal now and click OK. So now we have guides for our horizontal and vertical center and that's just going to again make it easier to draw things on either side and keep our drawing symmetrical. So now what I'm going to do is show the grid, the pixel grid, and to do that I'm going to go to view, show grid, and now we have a nice pixel grid here. It should be one pixel by one pixel, so every little piece of the grid here, every square is going to represent one pixel. If that's not the case for you, you can go to Edit, Preferences, and come over here to Default Grid. And make sure the spacing here for horizontal and vertical are both set to one. And I'll click OK. You guys may have to close out GIMP and reopen it if those settings don't apply right away. But here we have our pixel grid so we can get started with our drawing. And the first element that I went with was the head. So what I did is I used the selection tool. So I'll come over here and grab my ellipse select tool. Make sure your anti-aliasing is turned off here because you don't want uh, any smoothing of the pixels happening here. That's what anti-aliasing or anti-aliasing, I know you guys hate my pronunciation. Anti-aliasing is to you know create smoothing whenever there are going to be rounded elements in your image. So just go ahead and turn that off. And now I'm going to click and drag and I'm gonna hold the shift key here to make sure this is a perfect circle or at least close to it. And I'm going to release it right there so that the size of my ellipse or my circle here is 22 by 23. And then I'm gonna click and drag this until it snaps on the middle guide there. So now we have a perfect circle and what I'll do next is come over here to my Paths dialog. If you don't see that, go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs and choose Paths. So now I'll come over here, I'm gonna click this icon, Selection to Path. That's going to turn our selection area into a path. And if I unhide that, and hit Control shift a you can see now we have a nice perfect circle here. So I'm going to go ahead and stroke this path by grabbing my path tool. And I'm going to click on that path. And then I'm going to come over here to stroke path. A couple things we have to do here. First, switch our color to whatever color you want the stroke to be. In this case, I'm actually going to come over to my palettes because I did create a palette. And I'll make this palette available to you guys to download and upload into your GIMP. And I do have a tutorial on how to import palettes into GIMP, so check that out if you're not sure how to do it. But I'll come over here to my palette because I do have the Pixel Bunny palette selected here in my palettes dialog or my palettes tab. And then I'm going to come over here to the palette editor and I'm just going to choose a nice dark pink. That's what I used for the outline of my image. Then I'm going to come down here and make sure I check this stroke with a paint tool option. And I'm going to change the paint tool here to a pencil. The reason we use the pencil tool is that the paintbrush tool is going to have anti-aliasing or it's going to draw feathered edges. And that's going to cause spillover into other pixel areas that you don't necessarily want to draw in. Whereas the pencil tool is going to allow you to easily draw hard edges, which means you can easily draw individual pixels. So we'll choose the pencil option here for the paint tool. Make sure we have the right foreground color and then click stroke. So this should stroke a single pixel line here. If it doesn't, just come over here to your pencil tool and make sure your size is set to one here. So just drag the slider until it gets to one. Make sure also your hardness is turned all the way up to 100. And you're going to keep these settings for the entire duration of this tutorial. But as you can see here, if I hold control and zoom in, we have a nice even circle here in terms of a pixelated circle. And I'm actually going to come back to my paths dialog and hide that path and then come back to my layers dialog. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of making lines that aren't jaggy and making sure they're nice and symmetrical. So as you can see here, here is our center guide. We have one, two, three, four pixels to the left and then one, two, three, four pixels to the right. 
And then we go down a level and we have two pixels and over here we have the same. And then we go one, one, one. So right here we have one, one, one. And then back to two, back to two. And then these two lines are obviously the same. Back to two, one, 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 back to two. And then these two lines are the same. So it's perfectly symmetrical and there's nothing jaggy going on here. Next, I'm gonna draw the eyes. So to do that, I'm actually going to come over here to my palette editor and grab that black color. Or we could just hit this icon here. And I'm gonna come back over here to my drawing and I need to figure out a good placement for my eyes. And because we can't draw circles really with pixels, it's just gonna be a grouping of squares. I'm gonna to try to create the best circle I can. So what I'll do is I'll just click and draw two pixels right there and then click and do the same here and the same here and the same here. And actually, let me just lower this. And this is another thing with pixel art is that sometimes you have to hit Control Z to undo what you just drew and then just redraw it. So here's our eye and we wanna do the same thing on the other side. So again, we'll just draw two pixels at a time here. And obviously the issue with this is that it looks a little bit creepy. It you know, doesn't look cute. It's supposed to be a cute bunny here. So what we'll do is we'll fill in just three of the four pixels here within the eye. And what that does is it leaves this little white pixel and that just makes it look like there's a little shimmer in the pupil of the bunny's eye. So next I wanna draw the nose and another issue with pixel art is that if you wanna draw a triangle, it either has to be a really small triangle that is going to be about three pixels or it has to be a pretty huge triangle. And in this case, we don't want the bunny to have a gigantic nose. So we have to kind of offset the triangle or at least that was the solution I came up with. So if I come over here, I'm gonna choose another one of my colors. So in this case, I'm gonna go with this pink color. You can copy that HTML notation or again, you can download my palette. And what I'll do is I'll just create one, two, three, four pixels here. And then next what I did is I drew two pixels right here. And then I drew one pixel to the left of the guide. So this pixel is actually gonna be offset from the center of the guide. I could draw an additional pixel right here, or I could just forego that bottom pixel there altogether. This actually doesn't look too bad, but this is just what I did for the original drawing and I liked how the original drawing turned out. So I'll just stick with that. And by the way, if I hold control and zoom in here, you can see that my pencil tool is going to take up an entire pixel here. And it's gonna take up exactly one pixel. If I come over here and adjust the size of this, you can see that it'll take up way more pixels that way. And let me just turn this down a little bit more to about three. So in this case, you can see it's taking up a different amount of pixels. For you guys, if you're struggling to get the right size, let's say you turn the value all the way down to one, but it's not actually taking up a single pixel, you may just need to play around with the size of the pencil tool until it does take up one single pixel. It doesn't matter what exactly the size is set to so long as it only draws on one single pixel. So I'm gonna turn this back down to one because one does work for me. And then I'm gonna come over here and click on my black again. And for the portion right here, the little line going down from the nose, all I did was I drew a straight line down. And then to give it that curved look here, so this is curving, but it's obviously really difficult to draw a proper curve going on here in a pixel art. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo all that. All I did was I added a couple of pixels down here and that just created the illusion that this was sort of curving off at the end. So hold control and zoom out. So the next thing we wanna do is draw the main body of the bunny here. So I'm gonna come over here to my palette editor and I'm gonna grab that dark color again because that is going to be our main outline color. So we have a shape here that is sort of an oval shape. And so what we need to do is we need to draw an oval using these pixels. So I can always do like a quick sketch here and just sort of map out where roughly I want to draw the shape. So something like that. And then you can hold control and zoom in. And in this case, I'm gonna make the first part here the same width of the head, the bottom of the head here. And then I'm going to break it off like so. So anytime you have to have the line go downward, you're gonna to have to create almost like these steps here with the pixels. So usually it's up to your discretion as to how many pixels you wanna to use to convey you know, a step down or to convey a curve. In my case, for this drawing, I like to use two. So I did one, two, one, two, one, two. And then from this one, I'm actually going to go down four because I don't wanna keep going off forever to the left. Otherwise he's gonna look like a really overweight bunny. But I still need to come over a little bit here. So I'll just put one pixel right here. And then from there, I'm going to draw a large line downwards because we do need to cover a decent amount of ground here. And I don't want steps going all the way up and all the way down this bunny. It'll start to look weird. So what I'll do is I'll click on that last pixel we drew and I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and you guys can count out however many pixels down you wanna go. So in my case, I'm gonna go down about 10 or 12. 
And you can see down here, it's actually going to count for you how many pixels down you're going. So I'm going to go about 12 and I'll click right there. And I'm not going to finish the bottom portion of the shape because we do need the feet right here, as you can see in the original drawing, to sort of come up a little bit. So that's going to cut off the portion of the body. So I do want to leave a little bit of room for those feet. And then after we draw the feet, we can go back and finish uh, connecting everything. But now I'm going to come over to the other side and just make sure everything is symmetrical. So what I'll do is I'll just go one, two, and I'll just go over two again. And I'll hold control and zoom in. Sometimes it will snap to the guide. If that annoys you, you can go over here to view and check snap to guides, and then I'll turn that off. And so now I need to draw a line right here and make sure that these stop at the same point and then go over one and hold the shift key to be in straight line mode and then click and that should draw all your pixels in a straight line. You want to make sure you avoid something where the pixels go like that. That is a mistake. That is not something you want in your drawing usually, unless of course you're doing it intentionally for artistic purposes. But just make sure that when you are drawing these straight lines, and I'll hit Control Z to undo that and undo that. Just make sure when you're drawing these straight lines that they don't get cut off and start a new line. Now we need to decide where we want to draw the feet. So I'm going to go two pixels from the left of our center guide here. And then I just counted up five or six pixels from the bottom. And I'm just going to start this right here. And now I'm going to hold the shift key to draw in straight line mode. And I want this to be five pixels total. So I'm going to go up. We already have the first, so second, third, fourth, and fifth. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to go over two from the middle, hold the shift key, and just make sure these are the same height. So now we need to draw the part of the feet that's going to curve inwards. And obviously, we cannot draw curves with the pixels. So we've got to figure out a creative way to get these pixels over to the left without it looking too square. So what I did is I just went over by one pixel and then I just drew two pixels here. And I just did that three or four times like so. And then I'm going to draw one pixel here, hold the shift key and go over one, two, three. So I'm actually just going to stop it right here where the main portion of our uh, trunk of our bunny is here. And then from here we need to come back around as the shape of the foot does here. So I'm just going to draw a pixel here to start bringing this down. And I'll draw another one right here, and then I'll hold the shift key again, and I'm going to go down this time by six pixels. So I want to go down a little bit further, and we're going to do the same thing over here with the two pixels at a time. So I'm just going to go one, two, and in this case, I don't want to draw as many as I had going on here. So I'm just going to draw one more, and now I need to bring this over here to the original portion of our foot. So I'm going to click once here, hold the shift key, and I'll draw it to about right there. And now I need to connect these last ones. So I'll just draw one more pixel right here. And there is our foot. Obviously, this doesn't look great right now. So what we need to do is we need to erase this portion. So to do that, I'll come over here and grab my eraser tool. And you'll notice I have my size set to one here. My harness is set all the way up to 100. And if I come down here, I turned off the smooth stroke option. So basically, I put all the options on or turned all the options all the way up that are going to make this eraser brush as hard as possible. So that way we can get it down to a single pixel. And now I can come over here, hold control and zoom in and just erase these excess pixels here and hold control and zoom out. And now you can see our foot looks a lot better. So we're going to repeat these steps over here on the right side. So I'll hit N on my keyboard to grab my pencil tool, make sure I have the right color selected, hold control and zoom in. And now we can just copy exactly what's going on over here. And click right here, hold the shift key, and then click right here to create my last pixel. Now that we have our feet, I'm going to close off the loop here for the trunk of our bunny. So I'm going to come down about three pixels and just draw in these pixels right here. And if I hold control and zoom out, you can see it's starting to come together. Of course, I need to erase these pixels right here. So I'm going to grab my eraser tool and I'm just going to click and erase those two pixels. Next, we're going to draw the ears of the bunny. Again, these are going to be rounded. So almost every part of this character is rounded, which makes it a little bit difficult, but it's not anything we can't get through. So now we're going to come up here to the top and we're just going to use the same technique we use down here to make these look rounded by just, you know, having them go up in increments like that. So I'll come over here and find a good spot to start my ears. So I'll start with right here and I'm going to hit the end key on my keyboard to make sure I have my pencil tool selected. So I'm going to start right there. And then I'm going to go over two, so just like that. But I need to start coming down because I don't want the ears going way too far out like that. So I'll start coming down here. And I'll just keep going here 
to about right there. So we've got about four steps now. And we need to start coming down. So what I did is I sort of flipped the two pixels at a time thing. So now we can come down like that because I do need to continue to come outward as I come downward to sort of give it that look as it has over here in the sketch. So we'll just go down like that and make sure that we go down by an individual pixel here. And then I'm gonna click and create a pixel right here. Hold the shift key and I'm gonna go down here uh, let's go about right here, so just above the horizontal guide here, and I'll go ahead and click to draw that. And now we need to come back over here because the ears do, of course, loop back inward. So to do that, I'm just going to continue drawing two pixels at a time here. So I'm only going to draw two, and then I'm going to click right there to draw a pixel, hold the shift key, and just draw it over here until it attaches right here to the trunk. So now we have the outer portion of the first ear. I'm just going to go ahead and draw the second ear, the right ear in our case, you know, looking at the screen, the bunny's left ear. So I'm just going to repeat that so that I don't have to figure out how I did that again uh, for later on. So let's just get that out of the way now. So I'll click right here, hold the shift key. And now I'm going to, in the same manner I did over here, just draw some steps. So now we have a nice even set of ears here. Now we need to draw the inner portion of the ear right here. And again, that's going to be curved. So I'm gonna come over here and what I did was I just used the eyes right here to start. And then I went down two, three, and then I clicked here on the fourth and held the shift key. And I'll go down about 15 pixels here. And then I'll go one, two, and let's put the third there and then hold the shift key and just close that out. So now we have to close this portion off here so that it looks like it does over here. So what I did is I just sort of chose an area over here, drew a couple pixels and just went over here one and then held the shift key and drew this all the way down like that. So this part is up to you guys. I mean, the whole drawing is up to you, but this was just what I found uh, that looked best. And also what I did was I filled in this area because I felt like it was way too much blank space and it just sort of threw off the drawing here. So I just went ahead and filled that in. Of course, we need to repeat this portion over here on the right. So we'll go ahead and do that now. There we go. So the last thing we need to do before we start filling in the details here using some shading and some coloring is we need to draw the arms. And the way I drew the arms in the sketch, the arms were kind of laid out. And I found that when I was doing the pixel drawing, it didn't look as good that way. It just looked sort of blocky and awkward. So it looked a little bit cuter. It looked uh, a little bit better on the character to have the arms inward. It looked more like a bunny that way. So I'm just going to draw the arms inside of the main trunk here, the main body of the bunny. So to do that, I just counted one, two, three, four, five pixels from the center line there. And I'll just hold the shift key and drag this down a bit. I don't want to drag it down too much because we do need to make the you know, curved part of the arms here. So I'll just go over, let's say two pixels like that. And actually I'll just come over like that and come back up and hold the shift key and just bring that up there so it connects. And actually that looks a bit too small so I'm gonna undo that and just go down one more level and then come over one and then click here to come back up. So that looks a little bit better. And I'm just gonna do the same thing over here. So I'll count one, two, three, four, and click right here on the fifth. Hold the shift key and go down until these two are even. And then come over and come back up. All right, so now we have the bunny, the full head, body, all of the extremities. So now what we wanna do is come in and start to color this artwork here. And you guys can color the artwork on a separate layer, or if you don't care, you can just do it on the same layer, which is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna mostly use the bucket fill tool to color this in as well as the pencil tool. And of course, I'll be referencing the palette that I set up here. So let's start by hitting Shift B and that'll bring up our bucket fill tool here. And I'm gonna come over here and choose this sort of lighter pink color and just click once to fill in the ears here. And you can see over here, I have this set to fill similar colors and that's how I'm able to fill this in so easily. And now what I need to do is I'm gonna hit the N key to bring my pencil tool back up and I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. So we need to color in the portion of the feet down here. And I decided instead of using a gray color, I was just gonna use the same color I used to stroke the uh, artwork here. 
I just thought it looked a little bit better. So for this, I just sort of uh, loosely drew in the area and I didn't follow any sort of pattern or anything. I just kind of went with whatever looked best to have this whole area filled in. So that looks a little bit weird. So it will take some adjustments to get this to look the way you want it to look. And I'll hit the Shift E key to switch over to the eraser tool and just erase that. So I think that looks pretty good as the final product. So now I'm gonna hit the N key again and make sure that I have my right color selected here. And I'm just gonna make sure these two are even. So now is the portion where this matters because we need these two to be even so that everything is symmetrical. All right, so hold control and zoom out. So everything looks nice and symmetrical. So now I'm gonna go through here with the shading and what I'll do for this is I'm gonna grab my lighter gray color here but this color is still a little bit too dark. As you can see, it's too close to the outline color. So I'll hit Control Z, and what I'll do is I'll come over here to my foreground color and make sure I have this set to HSV, and then just drag the V slider, which is going to stand for value, until we get a nice light gray color here, and I'll click OK. So what we're doing here is we're drawing shadows, so you want to determine where your light source is. I decided that I liked the light source being above the main object or the main character. I just thought it was easier and it looked a little bit better. So that means I'm going to draw the shadows opposite of the light source, so it'll be below. So I'm going to go to the bottom portion of each part of my character here, and I'm just going to start by drawing some random pixels here. And we'll go back and erase any of these that we think don't look that great. So this is obviously too much, but I'm just going to leave that for now and come over here. And if you do accidentally draw over the pixel like I did just there, you can hold the control key, click on one of your pixel colors there, and then just replace that. So hold control and zoom out. So right now this doesn't look great. He almost looks like he needs to shave or something. So we're gonna hold control and zoom in a bit. Hold control and grab a uh, white color, or at least try to and or we could grab our eraser actually and just go ahead and erase anything that we think is a bit too much and i'll hold control and zoom in and i'm just going to erase that pixel and then these pixels as well i think these go out a bit too far and we'll add a last bit of detail to our character by hitting the n key to come back to our pencil tool hold control and zoom in I'm just going to add some white dots here. That just almost looks like, you know, pieces of light shimmering off of this. And I'll also just add a few white pixels over here. Again, it just adds a little tiny bit of detail and makes it look a little bit better. And let me just add one line of white right here. I think it looks too much like he has a floating head if we don't do that. So we'll just add that one line right there. And that also added a little bit of dimension there. And the last thing we can do, and this part is optional, is we can add an outline around the character just to, again, give it some more dimension or just help it stand out a little bit. So I'm gonna grab my dark color here, and I'm just going to fill in the pixels above here. And in this case, I'm actually gonna fill that pixel in. And as we're drawing our outline, we're just trying to determine how we want these shapes to look. So for example, everything is going to be round for this character, so I don't really want to close off that pixel right there because it makes it look too pointed. So I'll hit Control Z. So we'll just go down the line here and just add a second set of pixels, and that's just allowing this to have an outline. And then we'll finish this by drawing this all the way up here and make sure we draw that properly. You can always hold the shift key. I'm not going to outline any of the inner portions here of the character. I just want to do the outer portion there. But now we'll hit control shift T to hide the guide and go to view, show grid to hide the grid. And there is our final pixel character there. So now you can export this to whatever file type you want. Just go to file, export as, and choose your file type. I'll just go with the JPEG for now. So I'll name this Pixel Bunny, and I'll hit Export. And I'll just turn the quality all the way up to 100, hit Export again. 
I do recommend going to File, Save, and saving this as a .xef file because that's going to preserve the layers here. But otherwise, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can visit my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my best-selling GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.